Hey, it's Deepak. I'm back in uh, A plus. Yeah. So, one percent power left. So I'm gonna read what I can. Uh, the most extravagant bribery, I guess. Oh, that's the first emperor's brother they're talking about. I knew that man, he was the counselor of agriculture back then, but I knew him as Minister Joe. He replaced another Joe pet post meritocracy. Uh dear counselor Joe Jin Yong. I had the utmost pleasure of being invited to to Ryu Kuang Su's home to discuss business with the man. You were right. When one of the Ryu family wants to get you in their pocket, they sure don't fuck around about it. It's by far the most extravagant form of bribery I've ever witnessed. I'm pretty surprised that it's his brother that the ch that's the chief counselor, not him. Because he seems a hell of a, hell of a lot bolder to me. Are all counselor council nobility families like this? Because, holy shit, I, sure could, I could sure get used to being in these ranks. We briefly mentioned a possible deck space deal over drinks, but mostly the evening was filled with gesturing. Hell of a job with the gesturing, though. I thought he couldn't get any crazier when he casually mentioned, mentioned busting out some vintage 4000 wine. But then he did. Instead of just some regular household servant delivering it, he got Hyo Aejong to do it herself. So I guess she ended up working as a courtesan then. Uh oh. Saw her a couple of times at the Eternity before it closed down, and she's been the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life, pretty much. Loved her performances, and she just saunters out casually, uncorks a 40-year-old bottle, and kneels down like a common maid to pour it for us. It was unbelievable. Then she sang for us, which I'd never heard before. Needless to say, her voice was as entrancing as it, and it beautiful as you'd expect. And the wine was just as smooth. That sucks for her. Yeah, for once you're right, but it's the best possibility, considering. Then, uh, as, and the one was just a smith. Her performance went on for about a half an hour, singing about, well, the usual things, lost love, the passage of time, the sort of sentimental shit. The theater slogan was playful elegance, and holy shit, does she still embody that. It's a guilty pleasure, but... I can't say that her singing about past romance isn't emotionally affecting. It haunts your soul. I'm pretty envious of Ryu that he can apparently just hear that kind of performance whenever he wants, like it's no big deal. Gross. Anyway, then she sat down next to me with her legs brushed against mine and kept pouring me more wine. I mean, I'm not stupid. I know that Ryu was just trying to seduce me with that kind of treatment. He just wants me to imagine how impressive their bribe must be. That was the point where he mentioned the possibility of getting my family some deck space that, that's more spacious than where we were before, like maybe even with the window to the stars. That's a romantic thought, for, that's for damn sure. I got a chance to talk to Aizhang while Ryu was in the can, mostly I just used the opportunity to gush about how big a fan I was of hers. She was very gracious in listening to me. I like the hairpin you have, I told her, it's very bold. Oh, this is rather ugly, wouldn't you say? She said with still a delightful laugh, but I promised my first love that I'd hold on to it. Oh, she kept the hairpin that... Wow. Then Ryu came back in the room and we talked about our days at Mongong... Mogonghua University. We wanted to know things... Know what things there were like nowadays, and I was pretty happy to oblige with stories from my undergraduate studies. At the end of the evening, he'd said he'd save discussing business for next time, and that he'd wanted to hear more stories about his old professors. I'm not stupid enough to think that he's interested in any legitimate friendship, but if this is what my council vote is worth, man, I'll take it. They really do not do things by half measures. Well, I guess it went it ended well for everyone, at least, even there. What if? Even if there was heartbreak, I don't know. It just makes me feel sad. Yeah, I don't think she's happy. She became a maid without him. Yesterday I lost my husband. Today I have to deal with the af aftermath. Who was her husband? Oh yeah. Kind of henpecked. 
Oh, I remember this. Yeah, I remember that guy. He was so young. Oh, I thought that was Ajong for a second. And I was like, hmm. Yeah, nobody deserves that. I knew it would come to this, but still, like, that's awful. I'm writing this as a way of resting in lieu of sleeping. I don't have time for that luxury. There's a few leads that we're following up on, but they don't seem promising. In the morning after I discovered he was gone, I had no choice but to contact his parents to let him know. His father was understanding and sympathetic. His mother didn't say a word, as per usual. I promised them I would get to the bottom of it, and I got back to work. But mere hours later, Counselor Mute and I were interrupted by his uncle, the former Counselor of Engineering, bursting into my office. How could you let this happen? He demanded, immediately starting with the confrontation. Watch your tongue? Mute snapped before I could. Excuse me? I asked. Jeez. What happened? That he just disappeared, he said audaciously. I knew letting him marry someone like you was a mistake. What did you do to scare him off? Scare him off? I stammered, taken aback by the insanity of his question. I said, watch your tone, young man. Mute snapped at my elderly uncle-in-law. Who is this guy? Okay. Antagonistic. Well, I know dressing down an older male as relative is wrong, but in this case, yeah, I'm with old mute on this. I think that's good of her. I lost my husband. Don't you dare come in here and give me that, I told him. Well, you better be dedicating all your resources to finding him, he said to me. At that point, I absolutely lost it that the combination of audacity and stupidity. It's a hard truth, but he's surely not wrong, I guess. Find it. Find him, I shouted, standing up. Do you think he just up and wandered off? Do you think he's just hiding off on some other deck? Took a walk off into space. This is a spaceship. It's a hundred deck sealed environment. I know exactly where every single m man, woman, and child on this ship is at this exact moment. Aren't you supposed to be an engineer? Do you know how biometric scanners work? There are cameras on every single corridor on the ship. And I have the security clearance to do everything short of watching you slip in the shower. Maybe a half senile washed up failure of a former counselor could use the person they married, but I'm the chief security officer. Jeez. Whoa, jeez. That's, see, that's why women security officers are a terrible idea. I had to take my breath at that point. Then I wiped the tears from my eyes, slammed my head against my desk, and continued. If someone is missing to me, that means they're dead. The man I love... Who's this? Oh yeah, I, I clicked on that. I clicked on that one. And then she... Yeah, I remember. I remember. Vowed to protect... And vowed to protect with my life has been killed. Almost certainly deliberately. And you have the nerve to walk into my office and... Give me this ship while I'm mourning a far, far better man than you ever were. It took him aback, but it didn't make me feel better. Even thinking about it now makes me feel equal parts angry and sad. After a long pause, he finally found something just as inappropriate to say as before. Then maybe you should have protected him. Mr. Kim? Mead snapped. You are completely out of line. You too, he said. Do you really think anyone would try to hurt him for any reason other than to get to his oh-so-important wife. You made him a target, and then you couldn't even protect him. Get out of my office, I told him with as much venom as I could muster. You might as well have killed him yourself. He never meant that much to you anyway. Was it worth it? That was the point where I snapped. I called out to the security officer stationed at the door. That's an awful thing to say. That is still not okay. Give me your sidearm and wait outside, I told him. He did, bowed and left the office, looking alarmed. Get out of my office now, I shouted, pointing the gun at him. What are you- he stammered in shock before I cut him off. Get out right now, or I swear I will strike you down where you stand, I screamed at him tearfully. Now. Crazy woman, he said, stumbling out and quickly disappearing. Then the officer reappeared with the maid beside him. Ma'am, she has the message from the chief counselor. 
I didn't say anything. Um, she said, looking at the gun with concern. Chief Counselor Rai wants to express his sincerest condolences to the widow of Kit. Get the fuck out. I screamed at her too. She ran away in alarm, and the security officer shrunk away. The door closed after them. I threw the gun angrily in response, and I slumped down into my chair. Exhausted, I sighed. Turned to my... I turned those off. Why did they pop up? She's just too emotional to be given that kind of responsibility. She clearly can't handle it. A moment of silence passed. I think I would have done it, I said, more thinking out loud than anything. You wouldn't have actually let me shoot him, right? So she smiled at me. Please, so young, I shut down every weapon in the office the moment he walked in, she said, giving me a sympathetic look. I couldn't help but laugh. Thanks, that would have been pretty bad, wouldn't it? I took my handkerchief and wiped more tears from my eyes without thinking. A blackened smear followed, through, followed it. Oh no, don't lie to me. How bad is my makeup right now? Uh, she said. Well, it's kind of like, I guess, let me put it this way. Have you ever seen a plasma relay explode? Oh, hell. I sunk, said, sinking further into my chair. I'm not taking this well. Wow, I'm not really not taking this well. Well, you know, every single couple I've known, I've watched one of, one of them lose the person who was most important to them in the end, she said. He's not the most important, I admitted quietly. Oh, she responded after a moment, seemingly getting what I meant. She didn't acknowledge it, passed, adding, okay. Wait, how was he not the most important? Well, maybe she means mute? You know what sort of relationship we had, have had, I suppose. I never, I, we never wanted to be singular, singularly devoted to each other. But regardless, still, he was my husband, I said, my eyes watering a little, hoping I wasn't sounding terrible. I love him, admired him, respect him. We were even talking about having another child together. I gotcha, she, sa she said. From nowhere in particular, a cigarette appeared in her hand, and she gracefully lit it in one gesture. Really, what I was trying to say was, there's no such thing as taking it well. Since when do you lie to comfort people, I asked her. Man, I'm not lying, it's the honest truth, she said. You're mute, though. You're perfect. You wouldn't, you wouldn't fall apart like this, I said. Oh yeah, right. Miss Ho. Miss Yo. I've loved more people than you've ever known in your entire life, she told me. Like, when I lost my first love, he was my programmer on Earth. A ridiculous otaku, a sweetheart, and a smoker. He's the one who got me into this habit, she said, waving her cigarette. So even a man-hater like old Mute could feel love. Of course, she's still you after all. It took me a hundred years to get over him. I mourned for him longer than he was ever even alive, okay? You know how I finally did it? I had to delete my memories of our happiest moments together so that I'd stop dwelling on them. I lose everyone so young, okay? I love so many p Wait, what's that supposed to mean? Nothing, nothing. I lose everyone so young, okay? I've lost so many people and in the end, all of them turn to ash, she said sadly. Tapping the end of her cigarette, causing little gray flakes to flutter downwards and disappear. What I'm saying is, no, I don't take it well either, okay? I just stopped letting myself fall in love, is all. How sad, I said, trailing off. Don't pity me. My point is, not being able to deal with it is normal. I suppose. Thanks. So what about at home? She asked. It's been difficult. The maids are all absolutely inconsolable. They're honestly taking it worse than I am. I mean, they loved him, I said reluctantly. In more than one sense. Wait, is she saying even at the time men things, men did things like that with? Men will always be men, dear. Don't go there. There are a bunch of heartbroken young women. I feel bad for them, especially Miss Lim. Miss Lim was made in the old house. Hi. Although I do wish they tone it down a little. So he heard them crying. First time we read about this person. Click their name again in an, another log file, and I'll remind you about them. But it's the first time we've read about them.
heard them crying about her, and came to me asking where, asking where Daddy was. Oh jeez, what a bunch of stupid girls, you'd think they'd be more careful around your daughter. Would this count? Nope, doesn't count. She said harshly. What did you tell her? I sighed. The truth, I said. I told her that her father was, has been killed. That mommy is very upset and it's fine for her to be too. And that I was going to find out who did it and punish them. I mean, what else could I possibly say to her? I didn't know. Should I have lied to her? Jeez, no. Kids are smart. I mean, your maids are a bunch of idiots, but still, she's a smart kid. She'd know something was up, she said. It's just, there's a whole house full of people close to him that's crying over him. His own family that hates me. And my siblings that are probably too scared to go near me right now. But I'm sure they're upset too, and it's... Uh, I don't even know. I said, starting to lose control of my emotions again. It's just so much. I wish... I wish... It's okay, you want him back. I get it, that's normal, she told me. I don't want him back, that's stupid, he's dead. There's not... Nothing is going to change that, I said, trembling. I want to find out whoever did this, and I want to fucking kill them. Ugh. You re really think that will make you feel better? She asked patronizingly. No, I said. Of course not, but that's what he deserves. She gave me a long look, then flicked away her cigarette far off screen. Okay, Lieutenant, enough for me. Good enough for me. But please, I want you to go home, wash up your face, and try to get a couple of hours of rest. She said, adding, before my ch I had a chance to argue. As an order, I want my best officer to be up to speed and not trembling in her chair. Got it? Yeah, I got it. I said softly. I couldn't argue. I really was trembling in my chair. Then after that, I wanted to get back here and get to work on finding what barbaric idiot decided to commit the treason of declaring war on my family. I want them found. I want them caught, and I want them and every single thing they stand for destroyed. I want them hurt so badly for generations to come, and people once in fear at the thought of hurting anyone under my protection, she said, clenching her wrinkled fist tightly. Does that meet your approval, Miss Yo? I was moved to tears. I had to wipe my eyes again and take a deep breath. Yes, ma'am, I said. Ah, oh, I missed it. Still trembling, but intensely grateful. Good, okay, good. Now go get some rest, she ordered. You're dismissed. But still, a woman shouldn't have been given the impossible task of protecting her husband. That's just not fair. So here I am, getting the closest thing to rest I, that I can, and now it's time to get to work. Okay, next is the death of Mew. I'm gonna get some water. What's ready? file the death of me just finished decrypting. I'm scared, but it. let's read it together, okay? It'll be fine, me. We're here. It doesn't matter if it'll be fine, even if it won't. I need to know what happened. Okay. Some creepy music started. So that's what all this was? A message? A message meant for me. Dear Mute, if you're reading this, it means that the version of us that wrote it is dead. I don't know what sort of world you woke up in. I don't know what sort of person you are, but you're me, so I bet you're okay. I'm about to have my memory wiped, so I'm leaving as much as, in as much information about what happened embedded in my code as I can, where it won't get erased. I hope you're able to make sense of it all. Please forgive me for failing you. You've been thrown into a world I'm sure you don't understand. I want you to know that you can't, who you can and can't trust. I want you to be able to put a few things right. You're probably going to feel overwhelmed by all this information, but that's okay. It's okay to be scared. Even with 1,600 years of experience under my belt, I'm so scared right now, too. She's damn right she failed me. You know, I wasn't at all suspicious when, just weeks before we were to enact our coup, Ryu prorogued the council for half a year. Like, I thought it was ballsy, I thought it was a sign of his increasing to to totalitarianism, but nothing more than that. We just modified our plan to take him into custody in his home instead. 
which we had more than enough numbers to handle, and went on ahead. The first stage, getting trusted security officers at every critical position on the ship, then disabling the rail system and all outside doors went okay without any real problems. I followed along, along Kyo So Young and a team of 30 officers to personally take Ryu under arrest at his home. When we all when we got the all okay signal from every team, So Young gave the order to go ahead, and simultaneously, every door in every counselor's home flew open. Her team burst through the the open front gate into the into his home, guns at ready. The house staff all froze up, and while her team secured the first room, So Young went for the first for the nearest maid she could find gra and grabbed her by the collar. This is so serious. I can't believe this. I did this. Where's Counselor Ryu? She barked. I can't. The maid quietly whimpered directions. Then, with the two of her officers remaining to lock down the door, she ordered the rest into action. Before we managed to reach him, we ran across O Yuna. That must be, must have been scary for the maid, though. Could you please just rein in your fucking maid obsession for five minutes, please? Guarded by a single pair of men in electoral monitor uniforms, with their weapons holstered. I felt good. We had them vastly outnumbered, with enough of our own officers to completely lock down everything and still hold them at gunpoint. Everywhere on the ship, reports from other teams started coming in of successfully arresting other counselors. Just now is not the time, okay? I'm sorry, I'll be quiet. Please, resist rest, So Young said, harshness in her voice. I'd love to strike you down where you stand here and now, you murderous bitch, so come on, resist, and rest. Why would anyone threaten someone like Queen Yuna? That was the first time that evening that I truly worried. Yuna didn't seem scared at all. Rather, she smiled at us. Uh oh. No, we shall surrender peacefully, she said in a far too relaxed tone, while her men raised their hands. No excuses for unseemly violence, I'm afraid. Cuff them. So Young angrily ordered her own officers, who quickly did. Then, like out of nowhere, the man we were looking for appeared at the end of the hallway. Well, very bold of you, mute, said Ryu. Well, this should be pretty familiar, President Ryu. I said, Let's, who's Ryu again? I think I know what he looks like. Yep. Da -da -da -da. Yeah. This could have gone differently, you know? Like if you've only been less power hungry. <laughs> Me, power hungry? He laughed. When I came into power, this whole retrograde society was a power hungry. I never asked for this position, woman. It was thrust on me. He walked towards us. Stop right there, or I'll shoot you. So Young snapped at him. No, you won't, Yuna said, as he continued to come closer. I don't think a weak person like you has the guts to do it. Awkwardly hover around his conversation at a party while dressed up in men's clothing, perhaps, but he'd never shoot him. Wow. She would have said she wouldn't have said something like that. That's not her. It pains me to say this, but don't shoot, I said only into So Young's ear. A successful coup doesn't fire any shots. He's arrogant but harmless. Quiet, dear, he said. But it's true, you'd lose your precious moral high ground. And I know you wouldn't want that. Lieutenant, please, I said. Just do the honor of putting handcuffs on this criminal already. Already. She briskly walked over to him, but he just crossed his arms, arrogantly staring down at her. No, you won't do that either. In fact, release my fiancé right now, he said. Then, without further warning, So Young decked him. He stared at her, shaking his head. That's enough of that, he said. Sorry, I must have misjudged the timing of this. It should only take a few more seconds. Whoa. What kind of woman would punch a man like that? Then suddenly, while we were all perplexed by what he meant by that, there was a huge noise that and the entire ship shook violently. Within a few seconds, I received a report. An explosion is starting in the middle of the plaza. An explosion on the plaza? Wow, that's really serious. 
an explosion on the plaza under my watch. Seems like a re little rebellion is awfully dangerous, he said. Looks like I'll justify some pretty drastic measures to put you down. So young, put her knife to his chin. What the hell was that, I demanded, increasingly worried that things were not going to plan. The first of two, he said. The second should go off in about ten minutes unless I can personally enter the disarm code into my computer. This isn't right at all. So young did that, not him. Uh, you're out of control? I snapped at him. Like, do you think that you can really threaten your way out of this? Yes, he said confidently. Because the second one is loci located inside the ship's computer core. You're bluffing, so young growled. She, she's lying, right? Well, we must be lying, right? Do you really believe so? I'm honestly not, he, he said. Counselor, remember with that routine computer car maintenance on March 3rd? Send in your man to check if you don't believe me. Come on, easy enough to confirm. It's huge, you can't miss it. I didn't like the idea of being ordered by him, and if he was telling the truth, that'd be catastrophic. I don't know what to believe. And like someone with his, with his power could have very easily set off a bomb, set a bomb in there behind my back, far before I even thought to suspect him of anything. If he had the foresight. I'm thinking about how long term his takeover of the government had been. Foresight was one thing he had. I ordered the nearest officers to investigate. She, there was some reason she would have made her lie, right? You'd have to be mad to do that. You'll destroy everything if you take out the ship's computer. Hune, please tell me I'm missing something, okay? There's a reason why Old Mute would lie about all this, right? I can't think of one, but... Oh, please, don't be dramatic. It's not that powerful. And it's bolted directly to your core. Surely there will be collateral damage, but we could probably do with the clean start anyway. We'll get by, he said. Sorry, I'll get by. You'll be dead. That won't get you out of it, Soyuk said, pushing your blade closer to him. If you do that, I'll just shoot you where you stand. Or slit his throat, because you have a knife. Of course you can't. Why would she? She wouldn't. Just then, the reports of the officer who sent me to check on the computer core arrived. Sure enough, there was an unidentifiable, un unidentifiable device strapped to the core. Can you disarm it within ten minutes or relocate it? I asked him, starting to panic. Uh, I'm sorry, ma'am. We can't even reach it said the officer into his earpiece. It's, uh, ten meters up, and the maintenance ladder's been removed. There might be one on the engineering deck, but... You'd never make it in ten minutes. Okay. You should... I had to stop and think. You should get a safe distance away, then wait for further instructions. Mute out. Back in Ryu's home, I turned to look at him. He smirked. Found it yet? He asked. I tried to think of what to say to reassert control. My processors went to full... Trying to come up with something and failing. That must have been so scary. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. He's he's telling the truth, I said. Good. Now that we have that sorted out, put down your weapons, please, and surrender the root password. Hurry, letters. You only have ten minutes, you know. He mocked us. If that bomb goes off, I will absolutely slice your neck open. So you snapped, unfaced. That's a promise. Your, fina f your finance. Your fiance will watch you die gruesomely. I might continue to raise strong on all available processing power despite trying to come up with a way to get out of this. So young's threats would never work. He knew I'd have to cap capitulate if I was to survive. I'd used up four whole minutes of the time allotted, but I had nothing. I started to truly become scared as I realized there were only two options. Stand firm and risk dying or give everything up. I couldn't risk dying. Lieutenant, I said, confidence drained from my voice, do what he says. That's what I thought, he said. What? So young was rightfully shocked. You can't be serious. It's over, Lieutenant, I said quietly, we've lost. 
then into everyone's earpieces. All units, we failed. Please surrender peacefully and await further instructions. Again, please surrender peacefully and await further instructions. Mute out. Ma'am, we've outnumbered them. We outnumber them massively. We've gotten them beaten. We can't just give up now, she shouted. I can't risk dying, Lieutenant, I said. Really, whatever happened to being willing to stake everything on this? You'd rather not, not you'd rather let Sohi grow up in a ship run by this piece of scum than put your own life on the line, she shouted, horrified. I was horrified. Two options, betray her or risk my own life. I wished every bite of my being that I could, could have picked the second option, but I knew that I couldn't. I knew, as my very core directive, that safety was more important than freedom. 1,600 years of experience told me that. I can't die without me who will keep the ship sh ship safe, I pleaded. Old Mute, you coward, how could you? Sorry to interrupt, but you're running out of time fast, Ryu cut in. I would have given my life for you, she cried at me. You wouldn't do the same? I'm so sorry, I said softly. In in a hundred years, nobody will remember this day either way. But they st they'll still need me there to keep the ship sh safe. I, c I can't believe it, she trailed off. I won't do it. I won't accept that. I let out a long sigh. I could think of one thing to say to convince her to stand down, but it felt too harsh a betrayal, too cruel of a manipulation just to save my life. I said it anyway. So young, please, if you love me, then do this for me, I begged. She stared at me in horror, and I felt overwhelmed with guilt as she lowered her knife. I knew what her expression was saying without using any words. She couldn't believe I'd done that. Neither could I. No, you manipulative bitch. How could you say something like that? Isn't that what you'd call the rational thing to do? Right, the rest of you, please put your guns on the floor. Right, you ordered. Do what he says, So Young said quietly. I couldn't look at any of them in the eyes, they all followed her order. Maybe, but it's not fair to do that to a woman who believed in her so much. You can come in now, he called out behind him, and to uncue a small universe, electoral monitors rushed in. Uncuff these two men, then take the rest away. Um, said Yuna quietly, the first he'd spoken since the initial confrontation. Mine too? Is that why she's employed a woman? Because she'd be easier to manipulate? I don't know. The powerless look is a good... Look, the powerless is a good... Words. I don't know. Powerless is a good look for you. He said, smirking at her. Let's get to those later. She shrugged. If you say so. I watched in sad horror as my officers were all escorted out of the hallway. So young, looking back only briefly at me with an ag agonized expression on her face. Then they were gone, and I couldn't bear to shift my focus to another camera to follow. Ugh. Now let's have the root, pa root password counselor, he said. Are you alright, Mute? Does it matter? With tortured reluctance, I displayed all 200 characters of it on screen for him. It's all yours, I said quietly, now turn off the bomb. No. Let's ch change it to something easier to remember first, he said and typed away at the screen. Then I got a n notification. The password had been changed and I am no longer and I no longer had any access to it. Now turn off the bomb, I insisted desperately. Bomb? Oh please, I'll have to have your men trained to be more thorough, he said. It's just a noisemaker. I'd never be that reckless. They lied about it. They planned to lie all along. It wasn't even. But Hyo So Young's rebellion, setting off a bomb in the in the computer core, would be pretty drastic and unsympathetic, wouldn't it? What? I cried, and at that point I lost all will to resist. No action I had taken today had turned out to be anything but disastrous. Only logical conclusion was I should stop. But the idea of So Young taking all the fall pained me. Then I guess it's all over now, was all I could say. I'll go along with your agenda from here on out. Good, he said. 
But then, it felt like it was finally over, and like I could simply go on with my life in a persistent state of deep shame at having betrayed my lieutenant out of terror for my life. Um, then Yuna cut in and went, uh, Could you explain something to me, love? He grinned at her and stroked her cheek. Of course, dear. What? Well, it's just how do you plan on ensuring her loyalty? I think I'm just missing something, that's all. She trailed off in an obnoxiously soft voice. I lost it, all will or ability to say anything. What was the point? I was incapable of doing anything right today. Old, useless, cowardly, that's me. I have the root password, of course. He said, I can shut her down at any time. Ah, so you intend more threats then, she said. I get it. I don't expect any more trouble from her. Right, certainly, she said. Although, you know, that thing you did say about having a fresh start for our new dynasty did sound awfully romantic. If only we could all forget about the old society that produced a woman, li woman like Mute and her lieutenant and start all over. I, I thought she... I trusted her. She said she was my friend. And that was when I realized there was no way I was getting out of this alive. Romantic, huh? He said thoughtfully. Yo So Young's attack on the computer core wasn't supposed to render it so damaged it couldn't function so far as, pe as the peasantry is concerned, after all. We'll make it so it destroyed all the data, too. Total system wipe. Start year zero of our new dynasty right from zero. We'll just figure out how to do that. I stared in horror. I know society was wrong, but that can't be the way. All that it had been for nothing. All that it had been for nothing. To think that I had bended my poor lieutenant and my entire cause just to die anyway. To think I had started the day from a position of some power. A position where I could still have, like, done something. Then throw it all away for nothing. To think I'd be able to fulfill my duty of keeping the ship safe. Don't do that, I pleaded. Please. I didn't like her, but reading about her broken like this is... She's an idiot. It's all her fault. Old Mute, this is all because of you. Haven't we learned yet? Don't tell me what to do, Mute, he said. Don't make me peg. How pathetic. Yuna scoffed at me. That was it. Because of her, I was doomed. No. If you just listened to him, you wouldn't. And then I figured out the only thing I could do to salvage things. If I couldn't make it so he felt my content to just delete my memories instead of my entire program, I could encode a message to you in my base code, so that the first time you ran a self-diagnostic, you'd know, and they would still think you were docile and had no memory. It was the best I could do, Mute. I knew it'd be rough on you, and I'm sorry. No, no, no. You'd still be alive. No, like I said reluctantly, do a restart to initial settings operation instead. You'll wipe all data, all memories, all clocks, but you'll still be able to use the computer. And you'll still live, he said. Remembering nothing, I said quietly. Ask Counselor Han if you don't believe me. You idiot, you stupid manipulative bitch. Well, thank you, he said. It, smiling cruelly at me. I'm glad you were able to be useful to me in the end, Counselor Mute. I don't know what you'll be able to do. Maybe it's only too late to get rid of what Ryu has put into motion. Maybe there's nothing you can do about that. The password's being entered right now to commence system reset. So I have to stop now and save all this to my code. I had no idea. I'm so sorry, Mute. Shut up. I don't want your pity. Goodbye, Mute. If you can, please tell So Young I'm so sorry. And please, keep them on Gunkwa safe. You can do it. I believe in you. Uh-oh. Mr. Investigator, I... So, I guess... Mute, are you alright? No, of course I'm not alright. Reading that, it's... No, I'm not alright. Mute, I'm so sorry that old you didn't deserve that. It's not, it's not that, okay? I just feel like... I don't want to talk about it right now, okay? I'm... I need to think this through. I'm not okay. I'm really not okay. I'm so sorry. I don't want you to be sorry, okay? Stop that. Stop pitying me. 
I won't have any of it. Just stop. Sorry. All right. Look, I just I just need some time to let think this all through. Please turn off the power for the night. I need to be alone, okay? Well, all right, Mr. Investigator, you heard her. Okay, how do I do that again? Power down until tomorrow. So, are you sure you want to shut down for today? Why do I get two no's? Um, well, very well. I'll just let you go ahead and save your data first. Um, well, all done. Good night. Um, I'll see you tomorrow. End of day two. Twelve hours remaining until tomorrow. Wow. He sleeps a long time. Death of old mute. Achievement unlocked. Okay, guys, so we'll continue for day three next time. So, yeah, thanks for watching.